We are just hours away from the president's first State of the Union address, where he expects to tout many of his accomplishments over the last year as president. But is that what the mainstream media will focus on? Joining me now is Hard Kurtz, Fox News media analyst, Media Buzz host, author of the new book, Media Madness, Donald Trump, the Press, and the War Over the Truth, whatever the truth is at this point. Um, let's real quick start with the State of the Union. I feel like the reaction tomorrow is going to be negative no matter what. I think the is initial that reaction will yeah. be positive for this reason. Donald okay. Trump is good at giving scripted speeches. The White House leaks have made clear it's going to be in bipartisan and tone. Media love bipartisanship. There will be some carping about, well, he spoke to Congress last year and he hasn't been bipartisan. But by Thursday morning, nobody in the media will be talking about the speech because there will be some new Russia story, some new bombshell, or the president will tweet. And these things have a shorter half-life than they used to. Yeah. Um, in your, and you talk about a lot of that stuff in the book, how much the media has really changed. And you can feel it out there. And it feels like it has gotten so entrenched. And just the war between him and what we call the mainstream media, who's really getting hurt by that? Because maybe both sides are being helped. Oh, there's collateral damage on both sides. But what people in the press fail to understand is that negative coverage helps Donald Trump for two reasons. One is he dominates the news agenda, especially when he hits back against the fake news. Even when it's bad. Even when it's bad, because it also convinces his supporters who don't trust the mainstream media, who think the mainstream media view him, view them with condescension that he's fighting for them and they are not on the side of the people who actually voted for Donald Trump. But ironically, Melissa, uh, the organizations that you tune in uh, at night and it's mostly anti-Trump stuff and yeah. newspapers as well, um, their cash registers are ringing. They are making money uh, by playing to the anti-Trump crowd. But you know what the president did today? He had a background lunch with the network anchors and others who he sometimes accuses of being fake news because he still, would, on some level, as much as he resents the coverage, he'd like to win them over. So what is the hurt on both sides? I mean, you talked about, I can see how both of them profit. And I think that that's kind of what we've seen is that people have realized, everybody across the board, let's pitch to a certain group. Yes. And rather than trying to be broad, which is boring and no one goes to, you're narrow and you have a niche and you kind of follow that train and that's what you focus on. For us, it's business and, and you know, the economic side of it. Everybody's got their thing. So who's, but who's been hurt in this? Like on the president, how does it hurt him for the mainstream media? How is it hurting them? The damage for the president is that it's harder for him to get above 40 percent to appeal to people who are not already firmly on his side and also he contributes when he punches down at cable news hosts he contributes to distractions from his agenda his agenda is what he of course should be focusing on his aides would like that but here's the real problem and I'm somebody who comes out of the news business I love the news business I believe in fairness um, I think that the reaction the opposition the negativity toward this president is so not just ideological, because there are conservatives in the media don't like this president either. Yeah. It is visceral, yeah. it is cultural, it is personal, and I think ultimately there will come a day when Donald Trump is no longer president, I think the media have such a so much credibility loss because they are seen as one-sided, because they are seen as relentlessly negative, because Donald Trump can't get a break in when he plays golf and somebody writes that he's cheating, uh, that the damage is going to be long-lasting. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that, that and, and so what is so what does that mean? I mean, does it is there a day that maybe things soften, and they come back together? I mean, what if this goes on eight years? Is year seven like everybody comes back together and there's this big healing? And no, a, a year ago, Trump said to the network anchors at a similar launch. The biggest surprise is that when I became president, your coverage didn't improve. And I thought for a time there might be a ceasefire, the two sides, at least for a time. Well, but they thought he'd stop tweeting and he'd stop. Do, you know, he wouldn't attack at the same level. Too. There were a lot of people who said that. He may go too far on occasion, but he's entitled to punch back. He's entitled to hit back against what he sees as unfair coverage. Yeah. I think so. the two sides are so entrenched that we could be looking at years of constant warfare, especially running up to the 2020 election. I think the loser is we don't have a common set of facts we can agree on anymore. Nobody trusts the press to be the fair arbiter. The media have kind of given that up. Trump has contributed, but I think there are a lot of self-inflicted wounds, a lot of mistakes that had to be retracted in the last year, and I think that damage is long lasting. I don't know if there was ever a common set of facts. I mean, if you look back at the way that Reagan was covered, or you, I don't know how much we, we hearken for these days that were fairer and whatever. I'm not sure that really existed. And even you heard Mitch McConnell say today that, you know, uh, politicians on both sides used to say these ugly things. It just, you didn't have instant coverage. I think in the pre-Twitter age, before the toxicity of social media and fact-checking, people thought, well, fact-checker says it. Now nobody even believes the fact-checkers. I, I don't celebrate okay. this. I think yeah. it is damaging. We're all in our own bubbles now. Howard Kurtz, thank you. Great to see you in person. Yeah.